Howdy friendos, my name is Stuart and welcome to part two of our look into Harry Potter. If you haven't looked at any of the other videos, especially part one, please do. And Harry has already gone through four movies worth of adventures and it's about to get even crazier. Also, if you haven't already done so, here's the call to action. Be sure to fly on over to the like and subscribe button with your firebolt, stupefy that bell, and send your owls with characters you want to see and your thoughts on the video in the comment section below. And with that out of the way, let's go. Just to make sure that my retention rate is absolutely terrible, a quick announcement. We will temporarily be reducing our alignment video uploads back to once per week over the course of November. This is to ensure that our writers and editors will have enough time to publish everything for our D&D &D December Marathon. Here is a current look at the tentative schedule. Last year, the D&D December Marathon went spectacularly, and this year, I want to do the same thing and more. November this year will basically be Zelda month and December will be another marathon. And I think you guys will enjoy that I have an after Christmas surprise for you guys. Be sure to just do all those annoying things that keep the channel alive at the time. Like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. I promise that you guys will love the end of the year wrap up and I'm looking forward to a very productive 2023. <laughs> Eat up another ten-year-old. This one deserved it. Still spiraling from the fresh trauma, Harry threatens Dudley after being taunted. Like, I, I know we still have a lot to cover, uh, but Jesus, this is basically the equivalent of shoving a knife or a gun under his chin. That being said, he does save his cousin when they're jumped by Dementors. Chaotic evil for the very dark threat and lawful good for saving your cousin. Hey folks, full disclosure, uh, for whatever reason, half of the audio got messed up. So if it sounds different from this part to another part, uh, that's because it is. I had to redo this entire video starting at this point right now. Do with that information as you will. I just wanted to give a quick explanation. What are you doing here? Rescuing you, of course. The letter said I've been expelled from Hogwarts. Picked up by the Order of the Phoenix, Harry gets his first bit of news on how Dumbledore is fighting back against Voldemort. He wants to help, but the adults tell him to focus on his upcoming hearing for underage magic use. I should mention that because he got jumped by Dementors, he has to defend himself. Harry is honest with Dumbledore's help, and he's able to attend yet another year of school. Neutral good. And you walk around free, Potter. You better enjoy it while you can. I expect this to sell an Azkaban with your name on it. <laughs> So yeah, we do have to talk about this. Harry is a monstrously big dick at several people in this story. It's understandable that he's frustrated that no one believes him, and again, he's been traumatized, but he's also actively insulting his friend's mother, a giant bro code violation. One thing I do appreciate about the story is how much it realistically shows off an honest-to-god teenage boy with hormonal issues, and literal PTSD. I have to ding this chaotic evil, though, because that's the show I run. And how's theory supposed to prepare us for what's out there? There is nothing out there, dear. After confronting Umbridge, aka the worst teacher in Hogwarts, Harry is given detention. He then endures literal torture and decides not to tell anyone. Yes, he's saying Dumbledore has enough on his plate, but he doesn't want to give Umbridge the satisfaction, but... Really? Neutral. What does he think? We're forming some sort of wizard army. Fudge doesn't want you trained in combat. Combat? Learning the Ministry is enforcing non-combat training in fear, Harry and the others take charge. Harry then teaches all of the students self-defense courses on his own, admittedly at the urging of Hermione. Remember, folks, if the government is trying to pacify you, always ask why. Man. Not including an anti-government joke in the last video physically hurt me, I think. And while he doesn't feel qualified, Harry teaches everyone defense against the dark arts privately. All this also inspires him to become an Aurora as a career path. Even if it becomes illegal for clubs and they're caught, this is an incredibly based chaotic good. Voldemort may be after something. Something he didn't have last time. Seeing a vision of Arthur being attacked by Voldemort's snake, Harry warns Dumbledore. He's given the task to learn on how to block mind reading from Snape, who's having none of him. This ends when Harry instinctively does a counterspell on Snape after Sirius and James were insulted. Lawful neutral for really trying, and no, I won't blame movie Harry for reacting instinctively. In the book, this was way different too. Harry got praised for using the shielding charm and instead went looking into Snape's suppressed memories. And I'm going to give a lawful neutral for doing what he was goddamn told to do and chaotic neutral for invading someone's privacy because come on dude really
I need that prophecy. You'll have to kill me. Receiving a vision of Sirius in trouble, Harry tries to save him. Convinced by Hermione to at least see if it's a trap, Harry goes and breaks into Umbridge's office but is caught, warning Snape about the vision. I see nothing wrong here. Lawful g- <laughs> Fine. Chaotic g- <laughs> Neutral? <laughs> oh, for f- It's dumb. It's Umbr- <laughs> Fine. Chaotic neutral. Arguably evil, but like, no. Chaotic neutral. Of course, they tell me to bugger off and ain't the lot themselves. It's clever, Ron. That's been known to happen. With Umbridge and the Inquisitors gone, Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, Neville, and Luna go to save Sirius. He then obtains his prophecy, only to realize Hermione was right and it was a trap. In order to save his friends, he is about ready to hand over the prophecy, but is saved by Sirius and the Order. Neutral good. Use any one of them will. We'll earn you a one-way ticket to Azkaban, correct? So let's talk about this. I included the clip from Moody in this review because it's important to know the context of the unforgivable curses. These aren't like any other spells that Harry knows. This is a spell designed to hurt, and in this moment, Harry wants Bellatrix to suffer. I get it. I totally do. But this is technically chaotic evil by the rules presented in this universe. And you'll never know love or friendship. Not giving into Voldemort's temptations, Harry resists the mind control before finding out about the prophecy Sirius died for. Realizing that one of them will have to die, Harry readies himself to fight Wizard Hitler in what could be their final battle. Lawful good. Hey, I was wondering. Eleven. Wandering aimlessly throughout the summer, Harry is cock-blocked by Dumbledore to recruit an old Hogwarts teacher. I am going to give a chaotic neutral for Harry for wandering, since that's kind of dangerous to do at this point, but a neutral for just being himself and luring Slughorn back to Hogwarts. What about Hedwig? And my trunk? Both. I'm waiting for you. Harry spends the rest of his summer at the Weasleys. However, he quickly spots Malfoy skulking around Nocturne Alley with some suspicious characters. He immediately suspects the worst and begins spying on Malfoy. This goes poorly for him, chaotic neutral. I would think you would want to fill it with potions. Or is it no longer your ambition to become an Auror? Beginning the school year, Harry pursues his career as an Auror with the help of the Half-Blood Prince. He's not hiding the book or the tips from Ron and Hermione, and begins studying the book relentlessly, earning favor from Slughorn and a luck potion. Neutral good. What you are looking at are memories, in this case pertaining to one individual. Harry and Dumbledore begin working together to uncover Voldemort's secrets. Check out our video if you haven't already. Harry is then given the task of getting the information from Slughorn. This makes him double down on studying the book and becoming exceptionally skilled at potions. It works and he's invited into the Slug Club. Lawful neutral. If she was delivering that to Professor Dumbledore, she wasn't doing it knowingly. Yes, she was cursed. When witnessing the cursed artifact, Harry backs up his classmate's character and suspicion that Malfoy is up to something. Mind you, he doesn't have any proof and he begins stalking Malfoy's movements. Kinda messed up, but chaotic neutral. Those of you who don't know, Marcus's uncle invented the Wolfsbane potion. Is he working on anything new? Harry attends the Slug Club, desperately trying to get information from Slughorn. He understands the importance, but also realizes Slughorn is uncomfortable about divulging his information. Even after several attempts, this puts a wedge in between Slughorn and himself. True neutral. You look dreadful, Ron. Is that why you put something in his cup? I'm glad he decided not to cheat with Liquid Luck for a Quidditch game. And uh, I guess this will be a quick and dirty chaotic good since he did deceive Ron, but it was to believe in himself and get over his jitters, so chaotic good. She's only interested in you because she thinks you're the chosen one. But I am the chosen one. Harry, this girl wants to roofie you. But yeah, that's how I would have reacted as a teenager too. <laughs> chaotic corny. I'll escort him. Overhearing Snape admitting he took the unbreakable vow to help Draco, Harry tells his peers and Ron. Eventually, the Barrows is attacked and Harry defends it from the Death Eaters in an annoying and universe-breaking non-canon scene. Lawful good. She can never annoy me. I think I love her. With Ron roofied, Harry takes him to Slughorn for help. Too bad they accidentally stumble across another murder attempt from Malfoy. Luckily, Harry was there to help. Neutral good.
Now on the edge with Malfoy and feeling the pressure, Harry confronts him and uses an untested spell. This brutally fucks up Malfoy. And while I personally see this as self-defense, all things considering, Harry used very dark magic here, and even though he tries to convince himself later that he didn't know what it did, he kinda did. The book hints at this fairly hard as well. I'm going to give him a chaotic evil, because even though he tries to convince himself otherwise, he kinda knew this was gonna fuck him up. Alright, close your eyes. That way you can't be tempted. Ditching the book as a temptation, Harry remembers he has a literal luck potion at his side. Drinking it, he follows his gut and manages to convince Slughorn to give up the memory. He emphasizes to a drunken Slughorn that he is the only one who can defeat Voldemort and that Lily can't have died in vain. Lawful neutral. Four years ago, when you saved Ginny Weasley's life in the Chamber of Secrets, you brought me this. With the truth of Voldemort's immortality discovered, Harry and Dumbledore rush to locate the next one, which has been located already. Harry is forced to follow Dumbledore's orders, eventually working past the defenses of a cave and getting a locket. The poison trap is tough, but this was still following Dumbledore's orders. Awful neutral. We need to get you to the hospital, wing, sir. To Madame Pomfrey. Returning to Hogwarts, Harry discovers that Malfoy did bring the Death Eaters in. Hiding per Dumbledore's instructions, Harry witnesses Snape seemingly betray Dumbledore and the Order. Enraged, he attacks Snape and uses every curse he knows, but is ultimately defeated by the Half-Blood Prince. True neutral for staying behind as Dumbledore instructed, but chaotic evil for attacking Snape. You should know Professor Dumbledore. You meant a great deal to him. As the new day dawns, Harry realizes he has to find the other Horcruxes, and that means dropping out of Hogwarts. He initially pushes his teachers and loved ones away, but Ron and Hermione insist on helping. But hey, at least they're down three Horcruxes. Lawful good. It's fake. Ooh. Oh dear. Gosh, ugh, it's not safe for us here anymore. With Privet Drive soon to be compromised, Harry is shepherded away by his friends. He is against having his friends act as doubles, but is forced along with it. The plan goes wrong, but Harry helps Hagrid to get to the burrows and stall Voldemort again. Neutral good. Going somewhere? Nobody else is going to die. Guilt ridden by George's disfigurement and Mad Eye's death, Harry is ready to go on his own, but is stopped by Ron. They're gifted a few items from Dumbledore's will, but try to enjoy some moments of peace at the wedding. However, word reaches them that the ministry has fallen, and Harry, Ron, and Hermione flee. True neutral. <laughs> Defending themselves from some Death Eaters, Harry thinks smart and modifies their memories to better cover their tracks. Going to Grimwald Place, the group looks into leads on the Horcruxes. Chaotic good. Regulus Arcturus Black. R.A.B. Realizing Sirius's brother found the first locket, Harry confronts Creature and orders him to find the person who swiped it, Mundungus Fletcher. Again, unlike the book, this is orders he tells Creature, and with Dobby's help, they find Mundungus and the location of the locket in the ownership of the third worst wizard in existence, Umbridge. Lawful neutral. Knocking out three random ministry workers, Harry, Ron, and Hermione infiltrate the ministry. Things get chaotic quickly as Umbridge is doing literal witch hunts in the ministry. Unable to stand by, Harry blows his cover, saves a few people, and gets the locket. However, they are forced to flee Grimwald Place. Chaotic good. Okay, real talk. Um, nothing happens for a long time. I'm going to summarize this glorified camping trip. With no way to destroy the Horcrux and with no new leads, Harry, Ron, and Hermione stay on the move. Harry checks up on the map to see how Ginny's doing. Also, helping Hermione see the map. Finally happen when Harry is aided by Snape, in secret, however. Getting the sword and reunited with Ron, Harry gives Ron the option to take down the locket, which tries to corrupt him, but Ron perseveres and destroys the next Horcrux. Neutral good, twice. We ought to see Lovegood. Uh, let's vote on it. Those in favor? After saving Ron's ass from Hermione, good on you, Harry, the group go to see Xylophone Lovegood. That's not his actual name, but we're going to go with it. It's here we get a Nat 20 story bit and learn that Voldemort is searching for the strongest wand in the world and one third of the Deathly Hallows. Unfortunately, they learn too late that Xylophone has sold them out to save his daughter. In the books, I should note that Hermione made it possible for the Death Eaters to see them, so that way Luna wouldn't get punished. But Harry didn't actually play a part of that, so he only gets a true neutral. 
us your name. Help us. Brought to Malfoy Manor, Harry uses a mirror he got in the fifth book to ask for help as Bellatrix is torturing Hermione. Harry beats Draco again, saves his friends, and escapes with Dobby's help. However, in the process, Dobby was stabbed and killed, with Harry honoring him with a proper grave. Lawful good. I need to talk to the goblin. Recovering in Bill and Fleur's home, Harry deduces that the next Horcrux is at Gringotts in Bellatrix's vault. He consults with Ollivander and Griphook, making a deal with the latter to give the sword back, despite it being essential to their mission. He did offer him money, but he was being a true lawful neutral here. Here we go again. Uh, when the group are about to get caught robbing Gringotts, Harry uses the Imperious Curse on a goblin. I know this is another controversial pick, but the goblins aren't evil. Skipping all that controversial shit. I'm not addressing it. They're bankers. Harry is literally mind controlling an innocent person doing his job. Chosen one or not, this is still lawful evil. I know. I know it's controversial but he's using evil magic in a setting where that really matters. Sorry, not sorry. Making their way through the bank's defenses, the gang gets their next horcrux. They also cause a lot of goblins to die. Freeing a dragon, the group flies to freedom with their prize. Chaotic good. Slaves head master now, we can't just walk through the front door. Realizing the last of the Horcruxes and Voldemort are at Hogwarts, Harry rushes to his old school. Escaping some Death Eaters, the trio talk with Aberforth Dumbledore, the man who sent Dobby to save them. Despite Aberforth's advice to drop the suicide mission, Harry stands firm and is granted access to Hogwarts. Lawful good. Neville. Oh, you know, like hell, I reckon. Back in Hogwarts, Harry is reunited with the DA. He looks into finding the diadem of Ravenclaw, but is distracted when Snape calls an emergency okay, meeting. Okay. Not wanting to hurt anyone on his watch, Harry reveals himself and confronts Snape for his betrayal. Chaotic good. Also, this scene wasn't in the books, but we're gonna run with it anyway. I know. Do what you have to do. I'll secure the castle. With Voldemort outside the school, Harry rushes to find the next Horcrux. He gives Ron and Hermione the cup to destroy before getting help from Luna. He talks to the Grey Lady and learns of the Diadem's location. After a lot of back and forth, Harry promises to destroy it. Lawful good. Using his connection to Voldemort, Harry finds the diadem before Malfoy corners him. Harry confronts Malfoy about being spared before backup arrives. The room is burning, and Harry, Ron, and Hermione double back to save Malfoy. Since he didn't really have to do this, we'll label this as neutral good. She's the last one. It's the last Horcrux. Down to the last of the Horcruxes, Harry learns that Voldemort is getting desperate and that Nagini is the last one. Sneaking into the building, Harry overhears Voldemort's theory that Snape is the wielder of the Elder Wand. He waits as Snape is killed and Voldemort leaves, trying to help Snape briefly. Neutral good. With the Dark Army pulled back, Harry realizes Snape was a secret double agent all along, and the truth about himself. Knowing that he has to die in order for anyone to kill Voldemort, Harry tells Ron and Hermione his decision and goes for Voldemort's offer. He briefly talks to his loved ones before meeting Voldemort. This is another weird case of a lawful good suicide, I know. You brave, brave man. So Harry takes a moment to talk with the Spectre of Dumbledore and gets some info dumped on him. Harry's connection to Voldemort is gone and he's given the choice to move on or go back. Harry decides not to let evil go and returns to life. Lawful good. Is he alive? Waking up, Harry fakes his death and with the help of telling Narcissa that Draco is alive, he plays possum as Voldy does his victory lap before realizing he's alive. Using the surprise, he and Voldemort have their battle, with Harry realizing that he's actually the wielder of the Elder Wand, thanks to Draco. After Neville gets an epic kill off of Nagini, good job for you, nat 20 kill, Harry finally defeats his lifelong foe. Lawful good. When he killed Snape, he thought the wand would become his. But the thing is... With the most powerful wand at his fingertips, Harry gives up ultimate power. I know in the book, he actually repairs his old wand, and it's never quite sure what he does with the Elder Wand in actual canon, but I, 
this is actually a, a pleasant, nice solution. True neutral for both book and movie Harry. As the hero who beat Wizard Hitler, someone decided to do more than just give Gryffindor 60 points. The new minister lets Harry skip additional schooling and join the Aurora Force. Because seriously, why the fuck wouldn't you? Revolutionizing the Aurora Force, Harry becomes its leader before marrying Ginny and having three kids. Due to the last act of Snape, Harry vouches for Snape and lets his portrait be kept up, even naming his second son after him. Harry even lets his prejudices go as he tells Albus that nothing is wrong with Slytherin and seeing him off. Harry continues to do good, his scar never hurting again. Really Neutral good. God, let's give that like five dings for all those years. So before getting deep into Harry, what did he say? I could have worded that better. I really do want to praise the whole chosen one plot done pretty much right in these stories. I can unironically say it was done very well, with there being two great Chosen One candidates and neither one being put aside. And while I won't go too deep into Neville, unless these videos do really well and you really want to see a Neville video, <clears throat> Sound off in the comments and share, <coughs> you know, all those things. But Neville, much like Harry, starts off as an average student who quickly excels and becomes a heroic paragon for the wizarding community. He's not sidelined, but is having a grand adventure and becomes an absolute chad. But what about Harry himself? I know I made fun of his decisions and dark moments as the story keeps going, but Harry has not had it easy. Holy shit, has he not had it easy. Dude has lost his family again and again and again and again, from friends like Cedric to his godfather Sirius to his literal goddamn parents. He has witnessed death so many times, and it's all tied back to him, and this, coupled with a school and being a teenager and finding out that he's a chosen one, I, what do you expect? That would understandably fuck with anyone, especially a highly traumatized child who came from a highly traumatic home, especially from being raised by the Dursleys. Harry is a good kid who has been saddled with the literal fate of the world on his shoulders, and it does a number on him. And it's honestly a miracle that he didn't end up absolutely insane, and he tried his best. And to this series' credit, it expertly handles displaying what a teenager would act like in that situation. Overall, I can see why Harry Potter is still fondly remembered. It came at a good time for several children to latch onto and to learn about a fantastical, magical world. And again, if these videos do well, we will come back to it. And again, I understand it's controversial, but I still think it's important to praise what someone does right, even if you disagree with them. Recognize talent and a good job, but still be critical of what needs to be criticized. But hey, this ultimately comes down, what do you guys think? Did you like these series? We recorded all of these in advance, and I know that there was some controversy about it, so be sure to let me know in the comments if you want to see any more Harry Potter stuff. If you guys are not interested and if the views are bad, we will not look at any more Harry Potter videos. I'm not so attached that I need to keep looking at it, but I thought it was good for October. Let me know again in the comments below. Thank you all to the patrons, and happy Halloween!